John Rogers Commons October 13, 1862 to May 11, 1945, was an American institutional economist, Georgist, progressive and labor historian at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Topic: <laughs> Early Years. John R. Commons was born in Hollinsburg, Ohio on October 13, 1862. Commons had a religious upbringing which led him to be an advocate for social justice early in life. Commons was considered a poor student and suffered from a mental illness while studying. He was allowed to graduate without finishing because of the potential seen in his intense determination and curiosity. At this time, Commons became a follower of Henry George's single tax economics. He carried this Georgist or Ricardian approach to economics, with a focus on land and monopoly rents, throughout the rest of his life, including a proposal for income taxes with higher rates on land rents. After graduating from Oberlin College, Commons did two years of graduate studies at Johns Hopkins University, where he studied under Richard T. Ely, but left without a degree. After appointments at Oberlin and Indiana University, Commons began teaching at Syracuse University in 1895. In spring 1899, Syracuse dismissed him as a radical. Eventually Commons re-entered academia at the University of Wisconsin in 1904. Commons' early work exemplified his desire to unite Christian ideals with the emerging social sciences of sociology and economics. He was a frequent contributor to Kingdom magazine, was a founder of the American Institute for Christian Sociology, and authored a book in 1894 called Social Reform and the Church. He was an advocate of temperance legislation and was active in the National Prohibition Party. By his Wisconsin years, common scholarship had become less moralistic and more empirical, and he moved away from a religious viewpoint in his ethics and sociology. Topic. Career Commons is best known for developing an analysis of collective action by the state and other institutions, which he saw as essential to understanding economics. Commons believed that carefully crafted legislation could create social change, that view led him to be known as a socialist radical and incrementalist. Nevertheless he was also a racist, evident in his belief that only Northern Europeans, because of their basic and innate qualities of intelligence, manliness, and cooperation, could form democratic societies. He continued the strong American tradition in institutional economics by such figures as the economist and social theorist Thorstein Veblen. His notion of transaction is one of the most important contribution to institutional economics. The institutional theory was closely related to his remarkable successes in fact finding and drafting legislation on a wide range of social issues for the state of Wisconsin. He drafted legislation establishing Wisconsin's workers' compensation program, the first of its kind in the United States. In 1934, Commons published Institutional Economics, which laid out his view that institutions were made up of collective actions that, along with conflict of interests, defined the economy. He believed that institutional economics added collective control of individual transactions to existing economic theory. Commons considered the Scottish economist Henry Dunning MacLeod to be the originator. Of institutional economics, Commons was a contributor to the Pittsburgh Survey, a 1907 sociological investigation of a single American city. His graduate student, John A. Fitch, wrote The Steel Workers, a classic depiction of a key industry in early 20th century America. It was one of six key texts to come out of the survey. Edwin E. Witt, later known as the father of social security also did his Ph.D. at the University of Wisconsin-Madison under Commons. He was a leading advocate of proportional representation in the United States, writing a book on the subject in 1907 and serving as vice president of the Proportional Representation League. Commons undertook two major studies of the history of labor unions in the United States. 
Beginning in 1910, he edited a documentary history of American industrial society, a large work that preserved many original source documents of the American labor movement. Almost as soon as that work was complete, Commons began editing History of Labor in the United States, a narrative work which built on the previous ten-volume documentary history. <laughs> Death and legacy He died on May 11, 1945. Today, Commons's contribution to labor history is considered equal to his contributions to the theory of institutional economics. He also made valuable contributions to the history of economic thought, especially with regard to collective action. He is honored at the University of Wisconsin in Madison with rooms and clubs named for him. His former home, now known as the John R. Commons House, is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Topic. Quotes An institution is defined as collective action in control, liberation and expansion of individual action. Institutional Economics. American Economic Review, Vol. 21 December 1931, pp. 648–657. But the smallest unit of the institutional economists is a unit of activity a transaction, with its participants. Transactions intervene between the labor of the classic economists and the pleasures of the hedonic economists, simply because it is society that controls access to the forces of nature, and transactions are, not the exchange of commodities but the alienation and acquisition, between individuals, of the rights of property and liberty created by society, which must therefore be negotiated between the parties concerned before labor can produce, or consumers can consume, or commodities be physically exchanged. Institutional Economics American Economic Review, Vol. 21 December 1931, pp. 648 to 657 It is an easy and patriotic matter for the lawyer, minister, professor, employer, or investor, placed above the arena of competition, to proclaim the equal right of all races to American opportunities, to avow his own willingness to give way should even a better Chinaman, Hindu, or Turk come in to take his place, and to rebuke the racial hatred of those who resist this displacement. His patriotism and worldwide brotherhood cost him and his family nothing, and indeed they add to his profits and leisure." Races and Immigrants in America, pg. 115–16. Publications Solely authored works Distribution of Wealth New York, Macmillan, 1893. Social Reform and the Church. New York, Thomas Y. Crowell, 1894. Proportional Representation. New York, Crowell, 1896. Second Edition, Macmillan, 1907. City Government. Albany, New York, University of the State of New York Extension Department, 1898. Races and Immigrants in America. New York, Macmillan, 1907. Horace Greeley and the Working Class Origins of the Republican Party. Boston, Ginn & Co., 1909. Labor and Administration. New York, Macmillan, 1913. Industrial Goodwill. New York, McGraw-Hill Book Co., 1919. Trade Unionism and Labor Problems. Boston, Ginn & Co., 1921. Legal Foundations of Capitalism. New York, Macmillan, 1924. Institutional Economics. New York, Macmillan, 1934. Myself. Madison, University of Wisconsin Press, 1934, co-authored works Commons, John R. and Andrews, J.B. Principles of Labor Legislation. 
New York, Harper and Bros., 4th EDN 1916. Archive.org, Questia.com. Commons, John R., et al. History of Labor in the United States. Vols, 1-4. New York, Macmillan, 1918 1935. Commons, John R., et al. Industrial Government. New York, Macmillan, 1921. Commons, John R., Parsons, Kenneth H., and Perlman, Selig. The Economics of Collective Action. New York, Macmillan, 1950, Edited Works. Commons, John R., ed. Trade Unionism and Labor Problems. Boston, Ginn & Co., 1905. Commons, John R., ed. A Documentary History of American Industrial Society. In ten volumes. Cleveland, Ohio, Arthur H. Clark Co., 1910. Topic. See also EAEPE U.S. Labor Law UK Labor Law Notes <laughs>